Hey, it's Peter Reed Miller from On Sports Photography with Peter Reed Miller. I'm here today with my good friend, colleague, guy I've known forever and worked with forever, Richard Maxson. Uh, Richard and I go back, uh, we started shooting for Sports Illustrated in the 70s. We both went on contract. Uh, Richard then moved on. Richard also ran a color lab at the, t at the same time and then moved on to actually work in Rochester at Kodak for a number of years. And now he's come back to California. Uh, he's doing a lot of different things, uh, but one of them is he's developed these packs that allow you to transmit images out of your camera to pretty much anywhere. You want to tell us a little about them? Yeah, sure, Peter. And and. Thanks for having me. This is, this is really great. Thanks for coming on down. Yeah, like yeah, as you said, we've known each other for practically ever, and we've had some very interesting parallel careers. Yes, yes. Uh, you became the artist, and I became the technologist, yes. and that's probably why we actually get along. We get along. So yeah, it was yeah. really Artists great. Never get along. We yeah. weren't always going for the same thing. Yeah. Um, what I've got to show you today is some ways of connecting wirelessly between your camera and basically the cloud. Um, I came up with this solution basically out of necessity. After I left Kodak, I went back to shooting for USA Today, and I needed a value proposition that set me aside apart from all the other photographers. And this is an evolving process that really started just before the Vancouver Olympics and has now um, matured itself into a product that I believe is sellable and something that's going to be useful for photographers around the world. And these will work practically anywhere in the world. What it is, it's a, there's, I've got two different examples here. One of them I call the DM Connect Almost Anywhere Pack, and the Almost Anywhere is because it will work almost anywhere. And the reason I'm saying almost anywhere is it's wholly dependent on the ability of the cellular system in the building or in the arena that you're working in. Or, or outside. You or outside, anywhere, yeah. Because you're on the cell. You're yeah, you're on the cell. And a lot of the teams have been buying these and they're not only using them at the games, but they're using them at the practices, they're using them at the special events that the players go to. Anywhere that yeah. the photographers are covering, it goes back to an editor and then they're able to post the stuff. And and in this age of instantaneous social media, the need for the need for speed is a big deal. Yes, definitely. And definitely. that's that's what this provides. As long as you have somebody catch, catching it at the other end, throwing it is not a big deal. Um, what sets this apart from the little WTs and things like this on the camera is basically power. The fact that the WTs are Wi-Fi and not cellular based, and the other key is between the camera and a MiFi, if you're using it wirelessly, it's very slow. This is basically an Ethernet connection that is set up with a wireless link between the unit and the cloud. So I could be there shooting an event, and I could basically see if I can get a picture of Peter. And within the next 15 or 20 seconds, this image will be on an FTP server, and then they can be accessed from anywhere as long as you can hit an FTP server or your server. Yeah. Let's see if it's transmitting. Yeah, I, or, I will say, if I use this system or the uh, similar system, um, the other version, this, the Wi-Fi version, at the Rose Bowl this year, first time I've ever, I'm not a real uh, technical guy, and. Uh, it was great. It plugged in. I had the belt pack. Every time I'd go through after a play, I'd go through my images. I'd hit the button, and one would go off, and it would be up there in like five seconds. So the images that I just shot are here. I'm monitoring my FTP server at home, and the images are already there. So you can see they were there within 30 seconds. The, the major thing that took time was just for it to connect, but that's just a client-camera relationship. So, but that's basically what it does. So the version I have here works on practically any cellular service in the world. Uh, my prime is Verizon, my backup is AT&T. So this is the Almost Anywhere Pack. This is what I call the Jetpacker, and this is based on the new 
5G MiFi system that Verizon is deploying around the world. And this is the first 5G device that has become commercial on the market. And what I've done is I've modified it or made a kit so you can actually use this same way as the, um, the Almost Anywhere pack, plug your camera into and it goes over the Verizon 5G network. How much of a 5G network does Verizon have right now? Very limited. <laughs> yeah, I was afraid of that. Very, very limited, but they're, they're working on it. Um, one of the drawbacks, and, and Peter witnessed this down in Miami, <laughs> is uh, basically the throughput of what the companies, the, uh, the carriers have as far as backhaul. And now, what's backhaul? Backhaul is from their antenna to their head end to the internet. The problem isn't necessarily getting it in and out of the building. The problem was between the antenna that you're connected to and the infrastructure in the building. Okay. And there's no way, and the funny part about this is, and I've been talking with the, uh, some of the people, technology people, there's no way to really model it until you get 75,000 75, sacks people. of water yeah. 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 In, in the building yeah. that are all trying to stream out their social media at once, yeah. and you're competing with that. However, at the Super Bowl, it was rather interesting because one of the photographers had one of these packs shooting overhead, apparently by an antenna that wasn't getting pounded hard, and they moved 800 pictures out of the, oh, wow. Uh, wow. during the game. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it works. It's hit or miss a little bit, but we find, we're finding that it hits a lot more than it misses. Now you do also have a, uh, a Wi-Fi yeah. version. There's a Wi-Fi version. This is the uh, DMN Connect bridge system. And DMN, by the way, st stands for Digital Media Network. And if you look at my website, it will say RGM Innovations, which is the company I started no, no. to, what's to your, do this What's stuff. your website? It's it's www obviously, but nobody uses www anymore. RGM Synovations, S Y N O V A T I O N S dot com, and that has a website that explains all of this and shows what the product offerings are. The bridge system requires integration into the infrastructure at the building, which makes it a little more complicated. But what we're finding is that the teams are buying the base stations and the packs, putting them in, and they're very happy. It's, it's a matter of speed. The, this will move a picture roughly once every two seconds to ten seconds, depending on the backhaul capabilities of the building. This will move two pictures a second. And it works anywhere on the field. It's very quick, and once it's set up, it's extremely, extremely reliable. But you, but in that building, you have to have somewhere a Wi-Fi base station. Yes. Totally dedicated to that. You yep. can't just go on no. Wi-Fi that happens to be there. No, yeah. no. It's because uh, and the ir irony. It's the same problem. It's a backhaul issue. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, you'll get connected maybe. The other, the other thing that you have to take into consideration when working in like Staples Center or the Rose Bowl or the Coliseum is both the cellular and the Wi-Fi, the way the antennas are set up, the signal drops off about 10 feet in front of the stands. So there really isn't anything on the field. Yeah, well, they're not because there's no real need for anything to be on the field. No, and what my system does, instead of being high density, low power. I'm high power, low density. Okay. So it's, it's and these devices, including the, the uh, WTs that go on the cameras, don't roam well. So you'll lock onto a signal, it'll be fine, and then you'll move and you won't have anything, yeah. and it may not lock onto a new, a new access point for a while or until you reset. It's just a technical issue. Yeah. 
Wow, that's pretty amazing. As I said, I used this system at the Rose Bowl and it was great. No, no runners with cards, no nothing to do afterwards. We set it up the Rose Bowl. We were shooting for the Rose Bowl committee. They were putting it up on their social media almost instantly and uh, it, was, it was great. Um, so I can testify as a person who's never transmitted out of a camera before in his life, they plugged me in, they did a couple of settings, and boom, I was, I was off and running. And this is a Rose Bowl game. You got 70,000 people in the stands, you got three, 400 photographers, you've got massive television coverage, all that. And through all that, boom, we were pumping out pictures all game. And there were how many of us on the system? About uh, six. Six of us, yeah, pumping them out. So it's a, it's, a, it's a really good thing. And I think you could see even on another level, on the level of somebody who is shooting uh, you know, college sports or somebody who's shooting youth sports and you want to move that stuff up to uh, an internet portal, uh, like a photo shelter or a smug mug or something like that, where the, the, the parents or whomever can see the photos immediately, this will do it. You're not going back to your, your computer, you're not sticking in a card, you're getting that stuff up essentially while the game is going on. And I think, uh, I think that's a big help in terms of getting sales. So there you go. And, and, and Richard, approximately what are these, uh, what are these units cost? Okay, the, this pack, which is the um, DMN Connect almost anywhere pack, and this is the domestic one, around 850. The international version is around 950. And the Jetpacker is around 550, but you have to provide the MiFi device. Okay, so that's so basically you have the Jetpacker goes from a a Wi-Fi MiFi kind of thing. It's the you buy this from mm -hmm. Verizon, mm -hmm. and I have the kit to put it together to make it usable mm -hmm. for the type of work we do. All right. All right, well, great. Well, that's not unreasonable at all, I think, especially if you uh, figure it out over a period of a, of a football season or basketball season, you know, a lot of games. Um, well, you can put it in perspective. The WTs are around 700 bucks. Yeah, yeah, the ones that, that the camera They go on the camera, yeah. and they, they're they really hit or miss. Yeah, they're very limited. They're I've, great for the studio, Yeah, but that's about it. Yeah, this is for getting out, being out anywhere, shooting games, shooting stuff like that, yeah. Uh, I see people using the WTs, but I'm not really sure what kind of results they're getting. Well, they're getting, it's mixed results. It mm. also depends on the Wi-Fi system in the building. And this, because of the way this is architected, it generally works in the buildings very well. Mm -hmm. But not, not, not but uh, it works in the building, but it also works out in the state. Oh, no, yeah, well, okay. Yes, <laughs> as long as you can hit a cell, you're yeah, fine. Yeah. For instance, one of the photographers that was at a, an NFL event um, last spring took it out, and we were basically trying to figure out if it would even work in the building or out. And I said, well, where is it? He goes, well, it's out in a high school stadium in uh, wherever the Hall of Fame is. Oh, Canton, Ohio. Canton, oh. Ohio. Goes in there, shot the, whole game, shot the whole game with it, and was yeah. fine. Because you're just depending on cell service. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Well, Richard, this is pretty cool. I think it's, it's all great. You've always been you you and you've always been a builder and inventor. You invented a Kodachrome machine. Yeah. Uh, you did a lot of work at Kodak. Um, uh, additionally, you you uh, work as a photographer liaison with the. Well, tell tell us. Well, about that yeah, way. I'm the photographic liaison and coordinator of uh, digital media for the college football playoffs. Also, I'm in charge of putting together their. Uh, IT specifications for the photographers, and this is where we, uh, you know, we pioneered the tethering on the field. We we did a lot of things. It was, uh, it's quite good. I I'm very happy to say that uh, from the feedback we get, we're one of the most user friendly events. Well, as for a, a photographer, photographer who's covered hundreds, thousands of games of all kinds, hundreds of thousands probably. To have somebody like Richard who knows, who's been there, knows what the photographers need, uh, in charge of things is amazing. It's so much different than someone who doesn't really get it. And uh, yeah, just explain your formula for when you can run, run on the game after. Uh, <laughs> oh God, okay. I just get, yeah, yeah. So we actually, we actually, one of the things when they brought me on, it, and this, this happened about 10, 12 years ago, and it was a Rose Bowl related thing. I also do the same thing for the Rose Bowl. And, 
um, Pac-12 and, and, and Big Ten are the big, I don't, I think they're the big 16 yeah, the big or something. Yeah, they're yeah. the big everything. Yeah. Um, we wanted to, we, the problem was we were having photographers going into the bench area and blocking the Near other the end of the game, but the not the game. at the end of the game. Not at the end of the game. And Jumping the gun. Because back in the day when Peter and I were coming up, you ran out there, you shot with your 20 millimeter lens, and that's all you could do. Now everybody's sitting back with 600 millimeter lenses and getting tired of being blocked by people yeah, the going in. one guy who's still there with the 20. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. It's a really great picture. That, however, you're messing up hundreds of other pictures. hundreds of other people, and it's it's not fair. Plus, television doesn't particularly like it no, either. And no, when they're paying no. billions of dollars to broadcast this thing, the last thing you want to do is get them upset yeah. because then they'll they'll yeah. come down and change the rules. Yeah. So some of the rule, some of the things I asked for when they asked me to do it was we want to kneel and stand, mm -hmm. we want uh, we'll define the end of the game, all of that stuff, and you know vests that actually get you where you need to be, and a photo meeting, and the first year we had three photographers went into the bench area and they were summarily banned from any CFP bowls for five years, that got their attention. Okay, since then we haven't had the problem. The end of game, God, can I even pronounce it? Okay, zero, zero on the clock. Yeah, the obviously game. the end of game. 39 seconds remaining on the clock. The team with the lead has the ball. There's no timeouts left, and they kneel down. Yeah, there you go. Game over. Yeah, game's okay. over, essentially, even though there's 39 seconds on the clock. So, that worked fine for the first eight, nine years until we had a last-second overtime game where the field goal kicker missed. <laughs> and everybody went onto the field anyway. Sorry, I'm not going to penalize you for yeah, that because yeah, there's, at certain do? times you can't, yeah. you know, pre-anticipate what's going on or anticipate what's going on. Well, it's a lot of stuff, Richard. You've done a lot of stuff in your life. I think this stuff is really cool. I think it's got Thanks. a lot of uses uh, on the pro level down to really the, the high school or the youth sports level. Um, and uh, I, again, thank you for coming down yeah, today. It's no been problem. good to talk to you. We're, as you can see, we're old, old friends. We've been through a lot together, and hopefully uh, we'll go through some more. Yeah, I think the old is the uh, thing <laughs> we're going to give an yeah. exclamation we're point. Long, we're long-time friends. Long-time friends, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate good shooting, it. everybody. Thanks a lot. I want to thank my friends at GF Crew for making this video possible. If you want to make money shooting action sports, check out GF Crew. Go to gfcrew.com to join. It's free. They have a whole process and an app set up to help you make money shooting sports. Check it out. Get started today.